Um, the question I want to ask is like, why think about the news? Why think about current events? Why think about the current cultural issues? You might think, okay, I've got it. It's collectivism all over the place. A pox on everyone's houses. Um, I don't need to follow this stuff. And of course, not everyone needs to follow it in the same amount of depth. But is it enough just to reject everything? Why is there a, a real value to following the trends, following the news, having some people on that beat, and all of us maybe having some resources for it, knowing what's going on in the world? Uh, if the major factions in the culture wars are both bad or wrong, uh, can't we just accept that and write it all off and, you know, focus on other aspects of our careers or our personal lives? So first, I have to admit that I, I definitely have the tendency to think that way, to hell with them. You know, there's the, life is too interesting and too much fun and there's too much going on and there's too much things I'd love to do other than that. And that's weird because uh, the amount of cultural commentary and the much of the culture I, I actually do do. But, I, I, you know, I remember as a young objectivist here in Austin, uh, years and years ago, saying publicly in a, in a forum, saying, forget about the news, you know, live your life, just focus on living your life. First of all, it's the best way to change the world in a sense, because you'll be a model for other people. And secondly, you've only got one life, and why bother with, with all this really bad stuff that is constantly going on, and it's so much negativity, it, it's going to have an impact on your sense of life, it's gonna, it, it, and, it, and it's hard not for it not to have an impact on it. So, I, I am tempted by that view, and I think I think any egoist would be. I think if you're really selfish, then your initial tendency should be, I don't care. I I, I just want to live my life. I've got a career. I've got I've got. I, I want to find a, a somebody to love. I want to have a family or whatever it is. That's plenty. What do I need to worry about all this stuff? But of course, the 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 two pro, the, the few problems with that. One is that. Uh, you might want to ignore politics, but politics doesn't want to ignore you. Uh, that is that the world out there, the culture and the world out there is in your life, whether you want it or not, whether you identify directly it or not, but they are, they are imposing their force uh, directly or indirectly on you in every aspect of your life, really every aspect of your life, whether it's through the culture. And we live, I mean, this is one of the things I don't think we talk about it enough, but we live in a pretty bleak culture. I don't think we know that because we don't know what the alternative is. Right? Rand used to talk about the pre-World War and the post-World War culture and how if you didn't experience pre-World War I, if you didn't experience 19th century culture, you have no clue. And she was, in, and I don't think it was an accident, she was born in 1905. And, and many, so many geniuses were born in the late 19th century, early 20th century. Um, I mean, geniuses that we can all, that, that, that have the profound impact, that the great artists were born back then. There's something in the, in the culture that was so positive, and our culture sucks. It, a lot of it's the arts, but it's people's sense of life. Uh, well, she spoke about attitude. She spoke about us having a cultural value deprivation and yes. uh, analogized it to being in a, like a sensory deprivation chamber. Yes, it's definitely sensory deprivation. If you think about, if you think about how the streets in Athens were, and, and they were lined with, with art and there were sculptures everywhere and, and all that. And, and it's interesting. If you go in UT with the University of Texas here, and there are sculptures, but they're all old. They were all put up decades ago. Um, and uh, there's a beautiful, I, I think, a magnificent fountain here that nobody looks at because they're not used to looking at art and they're not used to paying attention. But there's a beautiful fountain right here in front of, uh, not far from the building that we're sitting in that if you look at the figures there, there's some magnificent figures in the fountain. Nobody looks at it. Um, and it was built, the artist, again, was born in, I think, the early part of the century, lived in San Antonio. Um, and, uh, and, and, but it, it was put up there a long, long time ago. That is, the, the orientation today is not to surround yourself with beauty and to surround yourself with inspiration. It's, if, if anything, they surround yourself with ugliness. That, that's the kind of, quote, art that they... That they put around us, but um, so there's the culture that uh, you know you you want to be involved in, partially because you want to identify the better parts of it, so you can embrace those. Partially because you want to change it, and you want to have better people around you, and you want to have uh, more beauty around you, and you want to have uh, you want to live in an environment that is is better and more beautiful. And then, of course, there's a politics, which is which is uh, all intrusive all the time. 
um, and is uh, the, the things going on uh, are terrifying and are heading in a in a very wrong direction, a very bad direction. Um, no matter who you know wins any particular election, it, in that sense, it doesn't really matter. It might matter to the speed, but the direction doesn't change. And one needs to have an impact, and one needs to understand it. And look, it, it's it's almost it's also getting to the point where. One wants to be involved. One wants to know what's going on in the world, partially because one wants to know where to live. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it used to be easy to know where to live, and and it's not so much because there are real differences. Um, there are real differences between states. There are real differences between countries. There are real differences between regions or projector projectories in terms of the future. Uh, you want to try to have an influence to the extent that you can, um, and you wanna you wanna be aware because uh, just as a survival mechanism because they're out there to get you and you want to be able to protect yourself in, in some capacity or another. On the other hand, one also has to be very very careful and I have to be very careful even as, a, as somebody who does this professionally not to overdo it. And, and uh, as people who are not professionals, you shouldn't do a lot of politics and a lot of stuff. I mean, it's, I, I talk about this a lot on the show. Life's too important to spend too much time worrying about this stuff because you, you, we want to have some impact, but the impact is small. Uh, to really have an impact, you'd have to spend a lot of your time doing it, and even then it's very uncertain. And uh, there are other more interesting things. Life is finite. Uh, the world will probably not end in our lifetime, so we might as well live it to the fullest all the way to the end. And uh, if you've completely let the state of the world, and particularly the state of politics, dominate you you'd be very very depressed it's very very depressing and and life's too short for that uh there, there are too many good things in the world uh, and, and it's it's really crucial and important to focus on those as well to focus on those as a primary and to let you know i think this is what people value in my show it to a large extent is that i i can i can give them a quick snapshot of what's going on they don't have to you know spend a huge amount of time studying themselves to the extent that they trust me they can uh, they can get the, the key points and and live their life and uh, and not uh, so there's the division of labor which I think is really really important but people I find so many people obsessing about politics which again I even have to protect myself from because if I spent all my time doing this I'd be depressed it is really it, it's depressing so um, you you know this is why I do you know I talk about surrounding yourself with beauty and focusing on your own life and things like that because I think it's really really crucial that you not obsess about these things. I have a, a few thoughts I'd just like to add about yeah. the what I see as the value of this kind of work and the place in life of it. We are affected by the culture uh, one way or another. And when people try to isolate themselves too much from thinking about what's going on, they're still affected by it. Their taxes go up, crime goes one way or another in the country, the political landscape changes, whatever happens. And they're affected by it. They tend to feel resentment about it, and rightfully so, but they often don't know where or how to direct it. They feel a little bit confused and powerless about it. Um, I think uh, it's important to living your life and to functioning to have a sense of where you are and what's happening. And you have to have that in kind of essentialized terms, not, you know, every little detail, this is the mayor and that's the third congressman and this guy just won this election or whatever. But like what politically, what culturally kind of world are you in? Uh, and to have it in a way that updates over time. Mm -hmm. What's changing? Uh, what happenings are big deals versus small deals? How do they affect the total? Is there something you can do now with your vote in this election? Is this one, you know, where the candidates are so similar, it doesn't make any difference, or is this one that matters? And you're never going to get maybe the ideal candidate, but maybe one of them is enough better that it's worth going out to vote or encouraging them. Um, to not feel hopeless and senseless and confused and bewildered by the world, you have to have a sense of at least at the high headline levels, what's happening, what kind of a society you're in, what you can do about it, um, how it impacts your other values, and to have it conceptualized from values that are uh, true and make sense. And, um, and you, that's hard to find. And, uh, it's hard to find in a world where the dominant values and dominant ideas are irrational, incoherent, wrong. And so I think it's important for 
holders of radical values, holders of true values, holders of true ideas, and objectivists in particular, to uh, be thinking about these things, to have a good source of news and analysis from that perspective. I think that's why it was so important to Rand herself mm -hmm. to do this kind of work. And it's why it's um, important to me that it's going on now, and your show is important to me. Um, I yeah. also think yeah, this is one of the things, that for people who are, are philosophers um, in particular, which is only a small subset yeah. of the group, there's a, a way in which you can get to, um, the ideas can become floating abstractions if you're not applying them to the world around you. And I remember, uh, I don't know if you'll remember this interaction, but um, years and years ago when I was working on uh, doing my graduate work, writing on very esoteric issues in Plato and Aristotle about epistemology, I was, would occasionally uh, pop on to HBL, the Harry Binswanger uh, email list run by a friend of ours, Harry, uh, and I was in a thread arguing about um, something about Iraq policy, why we'd already lost the war. Uh, and you sent me an email saying, like, it's good to see you philosophers, you know, dealing with these current events from time to time. But I think because of the issue of, like, it's not all detached and uh, in the forms, you know. Yeah, and I, I think that's, that, that is true of the philosophers. But it, but if for everybody it's 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 true because it's so hard it's it's important for people to take the objectivism and to see it in the world and to see also the negative predictions that it makes apply to, to sh it's important to see that evil is not efficacious and 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 you get that when you watch the world you get a lot of it because there's a lot of evil and a lot of non efficacious stuff going on um, and it's good to see when people are rational and when something is done well, that it's successful. And for that, I think it's good for non-philosophers, non-intellectuals to read some history, to know what's going on in the world. So if you live an integrated life, which is at the end of the day, what a flourishing life requires is that, is that you're really integrated. Your ideas are integrated with the way you live and, 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 and your knowledge is constantly growing and it, it, it helps you integrate further your ideas. Then you can't take a part of the world and say, I'm not going to look over there. Mm -hmm. Because then you're negating integration. So even if it's painful to look, you've got to look. And then the question is, how long do I look and how deep do I go and so on? That, you know, that's an evaluation we each have to make. But um, but that's the, I think, what people get out of the show again is of somebody like me is, is I make it a little easier for them to look over there when they when they we don't want to look. But you you have to integrate all the knowledge that's going on, everything that's going on into everything in your life. They, in the end, it's all connected. And I think, I think one of my strengths has always been um, the ability to integrate. So, this, so going back to how do, you, how do you sift through the news, it's to see connections between stories and to see that it's not, okay, this is going on over here and that's going on over here and then completely two different stories, but to see that it's all part of a, a particular trend or part of a particular movement, to see in terms of the world in which we live in, the why is the alt right connected to identity politics, right? Of the of the left, right? To see the two that are not they're not just two phenomena, but they're two phenomena of the same thing, mm -hmm. um, and and one is breeding off of each other, and one is reinforcing the other. To see the 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 the, the, the nine eleven and the Christian nature of 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 the Bush and and the people surrounding Bush and the Christian morality to see connection between all that that I think is the is the the advantage we as objectivists have in approaching these things is we know it's all connected, that they're not disparate, separate things. Maybe one integration to then seeing the positive to this that I can bring out, and then let's, if anybody again from the room wants to talk or raise an issue, ask questions. We do have a few. Please come to the mic, and then we'll go to the mainly super chat. for you because they huh. used to asking me questions. All right, well we can riff on <laughs> them good. together. Um, but the, there's a scene in Atlas Shrugged that's really um, significant to me that I think about sometimes when I'm down and call other people's attention to, uh, Dagny Taggart's at one of her lowest ebbs, um, her project the, uh, on the rail line that she's proudest of has finally been totally destroyed. Um, she's breaking down and uh, Francisco D'Anconia uh, shows up and takes her out for a drink. And she, I forget exactly how he puts it, but she's kind of feeling as though there's no good in the world as though nothing comes to anything, as though the people, uh, as though the world is made up of the kind of people who are in the meeting 
that she was just at, mm-hmm. people who can't hold firm convictions about anything, people who just suck or are irrational. And, and, but worse than that, they're just dreary nothings. And he says, like, look at the skyscrapers. Those are there, and they're proof that another kind of man exists, that those people aren't the bottom line on reality, um, those people aren't what life's about, that there is something better, that the irrationality that can overwhelm us when we look at the news or current events or, or are disappointed in people isn't the, you know, uh, the verdict we should reach on the world. And you can see that the other kind of men exist, and she asks, you know, where are they? And he says, and this will become significant to people who understand the plot of the book, when they're wanted, you'll be able to find them, or when you really want them, you'll be able to find them. Um, but what she's lacking there is a kind of perspective on the world that she'll learn over the course of the novel, the perspective objectivism gives you. Uh, but it's work. What that perspective does is to see there is real greatness, good, rationality, fantastic things in the world, all over the place. But it's diluted, inundated, mixed up in, all kinds of awful junk. And if you don't understand what's awful about the awful junk, what the alternatives to it is, you're not going to be able to see the good that's out there that's being uh, undercut by it. And you're not going to be able to see how to direct your life towards that good. And mm-hmm. um, I think you need uh, that perspective. You need, you, know, you need it at the right level of abstraction and not in all the details all the time, but you need to know that it can be done in the details all the time. And so... That's part of what I think is about. Yeah, no, I think that's right. And that's part of this, part of, you have to integrate all this into your life and it has real application. That is, um, let's say you, let's say the the world out there decides, uh, inspired by Elon Musk, that Apple is an evil company, right? And it's really evil. Then you might abandon, you might decide not to buy Apple products anymore. I mean, that's a, but to do that, you have to know whether they're really evil and, and you have to be engaged at least to some extent in that conversation about what it means to be for a company like that to be evil. Are they what's going on? So there's no the real decisions in the world. Should I boycott everything made in China? Should I travel to X country? Should I? There are a lot of decisions that these politically relevant issues ha- apply to that affect you. Should I go to work for a particular company? Um, and also that relate to there are a lot of issues that come out out of culture and politics that relate to the, the good. So again, I'll pitch my chip chip yeah, uh, really good. Uh, show sure. because because the thing I enjoyed most about uh, the book I read about the chip was to learn about chips. And when you learn about chips, the semiconductor chips, it's mind blowing. I mean, I still don't quite get it, right? They fit, I don't know, 100 million transistors into a little silicon. What the hell is 100 million? I mean, can you even contemplate the size of 100 million? How small they would have to be to fit on this little thing? And how do you do that? How do you, I mean, it's mind boggling to me. I don't know how they do it. I I say during the show multiple times, extreme UV light technology. I have no idea what that means, right? But it's cool because it has this application that changes the world that I do know about because I, you know, those chips are going to power all the stuff that I do. They're probably powering our ability uh, to some extent to communicate with you live via video and they will certainly power all the stuff in the future. So it's- I could raise the iPhone for you. Yes, there you go. (laughs) My iPhone's stuck. Um, But it's, it's stunning that people can come up with this stuff. And it's beyond my comprehension in terms of just what they do and how they do it, and and uh, and and uh, that it is done. I was I was describing this mirror that the 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 size of the flaw would be the equivalent, I think, of a millimeter millimeter if the if the mirror was the size of Germany. <laughs> I mean, that's precision. And people say there's nothing, there's no yeah. such thing as perfection, right? I mean, that's perfect, and. Yeah. That's the kind of mirror you have to have in order to do this extreme UV light and in that that kind of perfection. Um, so it's it's to discover that people even today, with all the ugliness in the world, are creating these beautiful things, these amazing things that do have an impact. And part of what motivates me, and I think part of what should motivate everybody, is I don't want to see that destroyed. I don't want to see that go away. You know, I I, I you know I'd rather live in a 
mixed world in which we live where there seems at least some beauty being produced, some amazing things being produced, then the alternative, which is, which is nothing, right? So, yeah. and so even maintaining the status quo is a big deal. So we know the status quo cannot be maintained. It has to go one way or the other. But ultimately, uh, even if I'll never see, um, you know, the, the, the perfect state, the perfect state of the world, the perfect culture, an objectivist culture, you know, I'd rather fight to, to, to see a better culture than I would otherwise uh, because there's so much good that actually exists in the world. And also, I mean, people are really down on the present world, yeah. um, pining for some ideal that hasn't ever been. And when do they wish they had been born? It's not like, you know, our birthright is a perfect society and, and you got screwed up because you were born this year rather than, you know, 10 years ago when everything would have been ideal. There was no 10 years ago when everything was, you know, everything's always been the bad. The default is irrationality, primitiveness, savagery. Every step towards a better society is a real achievement. We're not owed it. It was achieved by people who came before us and we have to do our best to improve it, keep it going. Yep. Um, to really value something is to be you know, willing to work for it, to appreciate it, and to recognize that it, you can't expect it to be given to you. Yes, and part of part of what frustrates is the number of people out there who are angry because they don't have their perfect objectivist world yet. Right. It's like, yep. where was it supposed to come from? Yeah, you know, if not from... There is no God. From you and from us. <laughs> Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.